Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking all about Juliet Has a Gun. I am going to be giving you my thoughts on the newest fragrance. This is the new one, came out for summer, Lust for Sun. I was sent this from Twisted Lily, so I'm excited to share my thoughts with you. It's interesting, it's interesting. I definitely have some thoughts. And then I thought, instead of just doing that as a review, I would let you know and rank all the Juliet Has a Gun perfumes that I have, because I have quite a few. I really do like the house a lot. Y'all already know my love for uh, Sunnyside Up, and I I feel like just the DNA of the house overall, I tend to vibe with. So I thought I would rank them for you, talk about the rest of the house, all of that, and give you a little more information than just the new one. But we're gonna start with the new fragrance first. Like I said, this was sent to me from Twisted Lily. I do have a coupon code with them. And so if you want any of the fragrances from Julia Has a Gun, they carry them over there and you can save some money with my code on these or a ton of other fragrances that they have over there. They specialize in niche. But I'd love to know if you guys tried this, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. This is definitely, a summery scent. I was really intrigued because this had a note of coconut, but it also had a lot of floral notes. So I was prepared for what I thought it would be. And to be honest, it's pretty much to me the like quintessential solar tropical floral with a touch of coconut perfume. Like that is what this is, okay? <laughs> I have to say though, I love the Juliet Has a Gun sprayers. They're really nice. They're like kind of a little bit slow, you know, a nice steady slow stream. Okay, whew, here it is. There's that smell. So for a full list of notes, this has freesia, coconut, and bergamot in the top. In the heart it has ylang ylang, minoy, orange blossom, and gardenia. So tons of florals there. And then the base, vanilla, and broxen, and musks. So yeah, all those white florals plus the ylang ylang, I definitely was like, okay, we're getting something probably pretty floral. I was hoping that in Broxen though, in the musk, kind of that base of the Julia Has a Gun perfume house would kind of come out. And I have to say, this is just not the perfume for me. I've only more recently been getting into white florals. So it's definitely been a journey. I started off really disliking them. So I know that I like this perfume more than I would have even like a year ago, but it's still very white floral heavy to me. I pick up on the gardenia the most. At least it's what my nose like picks out. So to me, it's very gardenia heavy. Like I almost mostly get gardenia. It is creamy though. It does have a sweetness to it. So it is more creamy than completely like really screechy or really stinky florals. The coconut that's in there, that vanilla, even the ambroxan and musk, they kind of like mellow it out, which is nice, but it's just a little overpowering. I really wish that the coconut came out to play more. I wish even the vanilla came out a little bit more just for me personally. And I wish that I smelled the ambroxan. Like I literally don't really smell it even in the dry down which I feel like this fragrance does last a very long time. Like it dies down as I wear it, but even hours and hours later, I can still smell this on me for sure. It's pretty potent. I feel like it also, I don't know if it would project per se, but my scent bubble is definitely filled. Like I feel like when I wear this, my scent bubble is suffocating me a little bit. And I think because particularly it's not my scent, it's a little cloying to wear. I don't think it's a bad perfume by any means. And if you like white florals, you'd like a solar, sunny kind of gardenia heavy white floral coconut suntan lotion this also kind of smells like an expensive hairspray like a summery expensive hairspray if you like that kind of scent i think you'd really like this it's just not for me and i think i'm a little bit surprised because again i was hoping that kind of the dna of the house would come out and it would be their own version of this but i actually find this to be like so many of these types of scents that come out like you guys know if you're in the fragrance world like so many scents smell like this you know or have a similar composition like they all kind of are doing this thing and I was hoping that this would be the version of that scent for me because it's from a house that I really enjoy but I find that it it goes a little more generic and it's missing to me anyway again this is just my thoughts uh, a little bit of that specialness that the Juliet has a gun line has so I wish the Ambroxan and the Musk came through a little bit more because I don't get them as much as I do in other scents and I don't get that kind of molecular thing that I love so much about the house so those are kind of some of my thoughts it's definitely not the one for me. I've tried cutting this with other things, like, like mixing this with other perfumes, and I still, like, this is just so powerful, at least to my nose, that um, I don't really even like layering it. So it's just not the perfume for me from Julia Has a Gun, unfortunately. And if I were smelling this in store, I would not buy a full bottle. That being said, I'd love to know your thoughts. Obviously, we all smell things differently, and this might be your perfect, like, 
solar white floral ylang ylang coconut moment for summer. I could totally see that, but I will say you gotta like white florals. Okay, so that's Lust for Sun. Love the name. I personally feel like Sunny Side Up is lusting for sun more than that for me, but let's go into ranking, okay? I gotta say, unfortunately, <laughs> this is at the bottom of my ranking. We'll just go on our way up to my favorite one, which I'm sure you guys can guess at this point, but I'm gonna put this last. I have six other perfumes. So this is in seventh place for me personally. On to my sixth favorite perfume from Juliet Has a Gun is actually, I think the next newest perfume that came out. This is Ego Stratus. And don't get me wrong, just cause it's number six, I like all the other perfumes that I have here. I think Lust for Sun is like truly one that I just, it doesn't vibe with me yet. I could see myself though, again, noses change like maybe in two years. I don't know. We'll see how fast I progress on the white floral train. But um, you know, depending on when your nose changes and all that, I could see myself if I get to liking white florals more, enjoying that fragrance, especially for summer. But Ego Stratus is very interesting. It has some marine notes to it, but it also has some fruity notes. It has like peach and blueberry in there, but then it's very musk heavy. I do feel like this has that kind of muskiness I expect from a Juliet Has a Gun perfume. So I do like that, but I do find this one to be a little odd. Like again, the combination of stuff, but also this is one of the ones out of here that I think most smells like other perfumes. Again, like I feel like I could see a lot of brands coming up with a scent like this. It doesn't feel super uniquely Juliet Has a Gun, although this one has more of those like molecular components to me. I hope I'm making sense there, but I feel like I could see other designer houses coming out with this. This smells a little more designer than it does super niche, at least to me. So I think a lot of people would like it. I think it's a more mass appealing scent in that way, but I like a little bit more of the uniqueness. And again, like I feel like this is two worlds combining, like kind of a designer scent mixed with Juliet Has a Gun. And I like just straight up Juliet Has a Gun type of scents. So that's why this one is number six for me. And this was another one sent to me from Twisted Lily when it came out. All right, next on my list is the Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. This is like the cornerstone of the brand to me. Like this is the one that everyone knows, this or Superdose, which is like this, like more intense. So this is like basically a singular note perfume and the name Not a Perfume is because this is just like a musky kind of skin scent. Some people can't even smell it. Like my husband cannot smell musks like this. He can't really smell Ambroxan or Cetalox, which those can kind of be the same thing. And this is using, I believe, Cetalox in this one. And if I'm correct, I believe those are synthetic versions of Ambergris, which I think comes from Wales. Is that how that all works? I think something like that, but it's kind of this musky, ambery kind of animalic smell. Again, a really nice skin scent. I call these because my husband calls these Emperor New Clothes perfumes because it's he's always like, uh, is that even a scent? Like, <laughs> are they actually a scent? Or are you guys, you know, being tricked? But they are a scent. These are the types of scents that I really love. Uh, but I put this down here because out of all of these kind of musky skin scents that have come out, I do prefer like an ISOE Super uh, as opposed to this, which is a little bit more on the woody side. And I more use this for layering anyway. Like I'm not gonna wear this necessarily on its own, at least for me nowadays. I just wanna do something a little bit more usually. I actually too recently bought the Nada Perfume Shower Gel and I don't like the shower gel at all. And I think that's kind of uh, lowered this on the list for me. Something about the shower gel just, it's like almost too animal it's like weird it just is like a little bit stinky it almost comes off a little bit like uh like lash glue uh but what is that it's also in latex it's that almost kind of fishy smell ammonia it almost has like an ammonia thing going on uh in the shower for me and i really don't like that and i don't even feel like it stays on my clothes so i don't suggest the shower gel just giving you a hint here but um i don't get that same thing from the perfume itself but i know that that experience is definitely like I'm like wary about this at this point. I like look at this with a little bit of a side eye because I'm like, are you gonna do that to me? But this one doesn't. My mom loves this. A lot of people love it. If you're looking for a fragrance that is really great at work, you know, it's not gonna bother people, all of that. This is really great. It has great sillage. Even if you can't smell it, sometimes you can go anosmic to it. Other people can. And I really feel like this is a building block of the brand. Like so many of the perfumes, I expect to have like some type of base like this, you know, like it's building off of this kind of central key cornerstone. For Julia Has a Gun, that's kind of how I look at them. And I also feel like with that one, it was 
was really unique when it came out, you know, like I feel like it was one of the only perfumes like that and I feel like more has come on the market now. Uh, so there's just a lot of other options to explore if you like that type of scent. But now let's move on into the top four. Hmm, it's so difficult because I really do like all these. I wouldn't have them if I didn't. But I think I'm gonna put Moscow Mule in next. My bottle's a little bit messed up. I got the second hand because I love to save money where I can, you know me. Hmm, and this really is like a refreshing gin drink to me. It really is. It has something a little bit fresh and kind of citrusy going on, a little bit of something aromatic. I almost want to say something slightly bitter. It really totes the line of unisex. Like it does not pull like necessarily masculine, but it doesn't pull feminine. It's just such a great refreshing kind of scent. I get a lot of like amberiness from this as well, which I love. I love that kind of toasted amber scent. And I feel like I get that from this too. So I just, I really like this one. It's an easy wear. And I feel like for me, I would rather wear this than this. This to me is just like, doesn't really have the personality as much, whereas this has that base. Like, you know, it has a similar thing, but then a few more mm, little sprinkles to it that I feel like push it over the edge and this becomes instead more my like easy everyday, easy wear type of fragrance. I don't feel like this one gets talked about a ton. So if you're interested in something that would be like literally a Moscow Mule drink smell of a perfume from what Juliet Has a Gun does, like this is that, like it's exactly that, exactly what you'd expect. And I think it's a really nice light, refreshing kind of scent for summer if you're interested. So I would check that one out if you haven't. It's pretty dang good. Next, top three on my list, I have Pear Ink. This is a really nice fruity, musky fragrance. As the name suggests, it is pear heavy, but it is very much like a LaCroix of a pear in that it's not syrupy or heavy. The musk really comes through. And so you're really just getting an essence of pear. I almost feel like it's on the verge of almost apple too without the sharpness that apple can have. And I feel like it's a grown-up version of like a Garnier Fructis scent. Like it doesn't have the sweetness that's there. It's just kind of musky. And again, a LaCroix Garnier Fructis type of scent. It's really nice, really refreshing. If you want something fruity, but you don't want something sweet, you don't want something syrupy, you want something lightweight, it's not gonna weigh you down, it's not gonna be cloying. This is a great one for spring and summer for sure. Ooh, really nice. Again, just has that, you know, Juliet has a gun DNA. That's what I'm talking about. Like this scent, Moscow Mule, not a perfume. The next two scents I'm gonna talk about, they all have definitely that kind of running Juliet has a gun DNA where it's just musky and kind of light and molecular and all that. Whereas I feel like the two newer scents, although Ego Stratus has some of that in here, these just have a lot more body to them in ways that feel more traditional and just not how I've experienced the house or at least the aspects that I love so much about the house. So just kind of interesting. I'm sure though that they're probably gonna be really well liked by a lot of people. Cause I feel like those molecular scents and all that tend to be more of like a niche style of perfume. Although that's changing a little bit too, but anyway, just some thoughts. Okay, let's move on to number two. This one kind of snuck up on me. This is Lipstick Fever. This was also sent to me from Twisted Lily and I really love this. So this has a raspberry in it, but again, it doesn't do raspberry in like this sweet syrupy way. I feel like raspberry fits in a scent, especially if it's like a cheaper scent. Oh my gosh, it's probably gonna be sweet as hell because raspberry just like turns up the sweetness, but this really does smell like, has that cosmetic-y kind of musky thing going on. I think there's like orris in here as well, which gives it a little bit of like a powdery scent and it's just really well done. It's something about it is like still warm though. Like it still has a warmth to it. Something kind of skin scenty and like sensual. I really, really love this. I just looked at the notes. There's no orris, it's iris and violet. So those purple flowers, which I believe orris is the root of the iris flower, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, there's some woodiness to this. There's some vanilla to this. And you know, it doesn't note any of like ambroxan or musks in that type of way. But I still get, again, that kind of like, this smells like a Juliet has a gun fragrance, you know? It's like weirdly complex while still being lightweight and kind of simple feeling. And I really love that. It's just a good one. And this one's not one that is super normal for me, you know? Like this is not a scent I tend to just like really gravitate to, but this one specifically, I just love it on me. I wish it lasted a little bit longer. If it had maybe some of those, like, I don't know if I had a little Ambroxan or something like that, maybe it would last a little bit longer. If you love like a makeup-y scent, I think you will really love Lipstick Fever. All right. Well, if you've watched probably like any of the videos on this channel or any of my perfume videos, 
things. You probably knew it was number one. Oh, and this is not just a number one for this grouping of perfumes. This is like in my top 10. This is in the tops of my collection. This is a perfume that just gets my soul. You know what I mean? So I love this perfume from Julia Has a Gun and it is Sunny Side Up. This is a woody coconut jasmine vanilla scent. The sandalwood in here is so creamy and delicious. It's a little bit powdery. It's a little bit musky. It has Isoly Super in it, which is one of my favorite scents I've already mentioned, which gives off this like clean kind of woody scent. I almost get something like, like rubbing alcohol from it a little bit. Like it's addicting in the way that rubbing alcohol is. Although I don't want to say that it smells like rubbing alcohol. Oh my God. When I smell this, it just makes me so happy. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. There's something milky and creamy about this. There's coconut milk in here, but it's also dry and woody too. So it's like this kind of mix where it feels creamy. The sandalwood feels creamy, but it also does smell dry. The jasmine in here is perfect. The vanilla in here is perfect. It's lightweight and addicting and just so good. If you love a musky woody scent, I don't feel like there's anything in here that really smells coconutty. I don't know. I mean, I love coconut though. And, and this is how I love coconut done too. So maybe I'm just totally biased, but it's just beautiful. Okay. It's so, so good. I highly suggest this. You guys already know. Um, if you haven't tried this, you can get a sample at Twisted Lily. That could be a good way. And I highly suggest sampling, well, any perfume, but also any of these scents that have molecular notes and deal with musks and ambers and things like that, just because they play differently on everyone's skin. They really do involve, I think a little more skin chemistry. I mean, all perfumes do, but I just feel like especially, and I've heard from some of you like some of you love it but I've also heard from some of you that you like the scent but it doesn't work with your skin so I highly suggest making sure it's gonna work for you beforehand but damn it's so good I love wearing this alone I love layering this with Baccarat I love layering this with Kayali Vanilla Utopia Cocoa which has similar notes but is a really creamy white floral and honestly to kind of bring it back around I feel like if I'm gonna go with that kind of coconut floral vanilla DNA I am way more into the Kayali one so just to kind of give you a rundown of where this kind of falls this goes way more solar way more warm and a lot more floral heavy than that one does and I really like the Kaoli one and that's one that I can do the florals in it was a little bit of a stretch at first when I first smelled that perfume I wasn't into it and then slowly I'm like oh my gosh now I love it because the vanilla in there I think there's a vanilla bourbon note so the vanilla is really creamy and I feel like kind of competes with the, the florals that are in there along with the coconut milk so if I'm gonna go for that kind of of summer coconut floral suntan kind of smell I'm gonna go that way and I feel like it's more on the creamy vanilla side over here and this on the slider is definitely going toward more of like a fresher scent a little bit more light well it still has the vanilla the florals just play so much more and it really comes off like that solary floral probably from the ylang ylang as well so so anyway those are my thoughts on lust for sun love this name i love the bottle i wish that i loved it more but i you know i will still give julia has a gun a chance every time because i love this so much that i know there's going to be another one that i'm going to just love as much like that's that's what I hold on to seriously but anyway I hope you enjoyed the ranking I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these what is your favorite fragrance from Juliet has a gun I'd love to know that I feel like out of the newer ones like Lily Fantasy as well as Magnolia Blossom I think it is like those also are just like a little bit different for me and I didn't quite get on but I'd love to hear your thoughts do you love those ones do you love Lust for a Sun if you've tried it let me know what do you think of Ego Stratus what do you think of my favorite sunny side up I hope you like it as much as me. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for being here, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.